Hello and welcome to the Sounds from the Grave podcast. My name is Yusuf. My name is Vanya. And happy Friday the 13th, everybody. Yes, it is. You know what's crazy is that we get super exciting news. And on top of that, it is Friday the 13th. It is Halloween. Now starting today, and we are all, well, I mean, we already started putting our decorations up since August 1st. Let's be real. But this is actually starting to feel a little spooky since just the day of unluckiness or when uh jason gets to kill you yeah. whichever one you prefer so yeah and also 13 dollar <laughs> tattoos or 31 depending on where you're going but discount yes. tattoos there you go that's that's the big deal one yes but uh today is a very very special episode um last week we did our bonus for hhn where we got blessed um, the HHN got smiled even wider in this time. Oh, you wanted more. Fear's fucking everything. Literally what happened. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I already told you, so I kind of mm-hmm. have mixed feelings about it. Because it's just like, damn, like, how are we supposed to now be hyped leading up to the event? You know, every Thursday now looking forward to something and now it's like, now what? We have three weeks until the event, but we'll make the most of it. They gave us all of the information, so let's go ahead and talk about it, shall yeah. we? I mean, believe me, the hype is still there no matter what. But Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, first thing we're going to talk about, because uh, we're going to go through the way you would see it on the website. So we're going to go houses, then scare zones, then shows. Uh, so we're going to start okay. off with all of the houses, which, by the way, really was really um a surprise and like a very nice surprise the fact that we're going to get more originals than ips this year yeah it seems like it is going to be just a dump of uh originals and i'm kind of excited for it honestly. oh me too especially the last one was a well not the last one but one of them was definitely a pleasant surprise uh because it's something that a lot of hhn uh fans have been wanting for so long especially for uh people who have been following the legendary truth but yes. we'll talk about that later yeah um going through all the uh the houses i honestly i really can't pick one that i'm most excited for because they're all so just i just i'm just excited for all of them like yeah. i i can't decide of like okay this is the one i definitely have to hit first they made it really hard this year <laughs> yeah i mean for me it's still scary but you know i'm also yeah. also hhn icons but that's mm. about it but um yeah let's go ahead and get started the first uh house they got announced uh, after literally just seeing the facade for like three four weeks at this point but uh it is welcome to scary horror in the heartland yeah so this is the one that i am super excited about because you know I love the lore behind uh, Cary, Ohio. Obviously, there's nothing that actually happens over there. It's just a normal little town. It doesn't have its horrors. But, uh, you know, the what Howling Hornets tends to do is that they tend to put all these stories into this little town and make it known, especially mm-hmm. for a really low population. But in this lore, in Cary, Ohio, bad things just happen. No one escapes this small town. He said by a endless parade of bloodthirsty creatures and maniacs. Yes. So I heard a little bit of there is going to be a feature or something of the sort having to do with Hive uh, that has Ooh. happened in the past. Interesting. So uh, okay. that's definitely um, that's something really I'm cool. looking forward to. Like a little homage, I'm pretty sure, to like Hive mm. and everything that had to do with the originals. Um, so yeah. It yeah, is I'm, I'm very excited amazing. for this house. Um, I, I, I'm still waiting for a shirt that has like the, the sign when you walk in. You know, this is welcome to Cary, Ohio, but it's all like scratched off. Somebody wrote the S on there to make it scary. Like, I want that as a shirt so bad. Yeah, I'm pretty sure someone, either HHN is going to drop it or mm-hmm. it's going to be someone on T Public yeah. or Red Bubble, whoever yeah. drops it first, honestly. Any, any, if anybody's going to be doing that shirt, please reach out to me because I, I need that. I will buy that from you and I will support you no matter what. 
so please please make that shirt somebody yes um but yeah we there are some houses uh if you go to the website that you can click on that says you know click here to learn more um scary is one of those houses and they have these three little bullet points on here. Uh, one of them says, if a claws bites, feasts on blood, or just likes to rip people to shred, it somehow finds its way to carry. Uh, the next, which which is, by the way, just like... Which is, right, which is why it reminds me of like the whole uh, theory that everybody's like talking about with Hive. Because it feels like it's something of that sort. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So I, I, lo- I love the fact that it's almost like a, it's like a, like a lightning rod... For, for evil and evil creatures and that kind of stuff. It's like yeah. they're like they just are attracted to that town for some reason. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, next bullet point though, it says experience an endless parade of unimaginable terrors from horrifying creatures to bloodthirsty maniacs. So we're really Love gonna get that. to see like the whole gamut because I mean, Cary, Ohio hasn't j- doesn't just have like psycho killers. It has creatures, it has monsters, it has lizard people. So like this this place is everything. I wonder if we're seeing other creatures in HHN Pass, mm-hmm. not just referring to that. But of course, I feel like uh, like the spawning, maybe. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking one too. Of them because it also has like little gross under sewers thing mm-hmm. from Cario Io and that kind of thing. Yeah, so like, there's like, a lot of homages to kind of that thing because it's like things we get to learn a little bit what lies be like underneath the grounds mm-hmm. or the walls of Cario Io. Uh, funny enough, when I was just reading that, I feel like um, like feel like Stefan from Saturday Night Live. I'm like, this place has everything: lizard people, bloodthirsty maniacs, creatures, everything. It sounded like Donald Trump, and not in a good way. No, I was trying to sound like Stefan. I'm I'm sorry. That's a horrible impression. Yeah, like is it like sh- shining? This like, place has everything. Like, it's all the shiny. I'm an asshole. I'm an asshole. I use. <laughs> Yes, I have this big ice spray Cheeto spray tan on my body. And then oh, I make man. other people like it, but you know, oh, that's sexual oh, no, predatory stop, thing. Stop, I don't want to know about you. that now. That's disgusting. <laughs> now that's like real horror. Oh, for sure. But anyways. <laughs> Look, stop, please. <laughs> oh, man. All right. And the, the last bullet point is you can scream all you want and carry... But everybody's too busy during your own screaming to pay much notice. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god. That's insane. I yeah. love that. It's really playing into that whole, you know, uh, don't go alone uh, slogan for this year. Yeah. So I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, I, I think that's really clever, honestly. Mm-hmm. Now, here's what I'm thinking we might see in this house, though. Uh, I'm kind of. I'm literally thinking we might just like take a trip through Cary, Ohio, and like see everything that the town has to offer. So like we started kind of like the outskirts of the town, then the suburbs, then like the main hall, like the main area. You know where like city hall would be. And I'm like, pretty sure like leave it to Cleaver is going to be a part of that. Oh, I'm shit. sure it's going to be there. You know, like kind of like in the, like the the shop area, and then it ends yeah. in like the sewers. So you like literally make your way through the entire town, which I think would be really really cool because of course there's all the creatures and and killers and everything are attached to like certain pieces so like in the suburbs you could have you know the inmates of shady side from like psycho uh, psycho scarapy you know home for the holidays type stuff uh yeah, and i'm pretty <laughs> sure hr blood and guts maybe i would love to see hr blood and guts mm-hmm. so like yeah that's just right what the i would TV love station. to see yeah so like literally making your way through all the major landmarks in Cary, ohio yes yeah, i think that would be really fun um, but anyway, Vanya, what is, what's the next house that we got? So I mentioned this earlier and it is for those of us who are really big fans of, uh, HHN past, uh, also having to do a little bit with Cary, Ohio. It is, uh, the legendary truth and it is case files on earth, uh, which is a part of the legendary truth series. And then you follow the trail of a private eye as an investigation into a supernatural that leads you into a dark world of ghouls and terrifying creatures. So, yeah, this is going to be super amazing. And the fact that it is going to be an IP is definitely super fascinating. You mean it's an original, it's not an IP. Oh, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Sorry. I, I That slipped out. I mean, I... Stop saying IP. Uh, original. <laughs> 
Um, uh, well, if you guys get to hear that, I'm sorry. I disembarrassed myself. Hi. How but, are you? But baby Boris is back. We're going to get Boris again. I'm so excited. Like, I, I've always loved the lore of the whole Bloody Mary thing. I just... It's like one of the most realized lores, even though it was only used for a year. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. And the fact that they're going to bring Boris, I know he's kind of like a, a cult classic or like a cult favorite character. I know there's like a small but very loyal following for Boris. And the fact that they're catering to that is really, really amazing of Horror Nights to do something like that. Yeah, especially since a lot of people I know in the HHN community, they're begging and crying mm -hmm. like to, I, to bring back bloody mary but they just won't yeah. because of the whole uh situation but hopefully someday in the future yeah i'm i'm really excited to like see what they're gonna do in terms of creatures and like ghouls and like what kind of designs they're gonna go for and also, yeah. I'm just I'm just excited to see Boris like in his office and that kind of stuff. I'm just like I, I love like detective stories, uh, yeah. and the fact that they're make, like mixing that with horror nights, I'm like I'm in. Like I'm don't even say less. I'm I'm already there. <laughs> Supernatural true crime. What? what? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is definitely one of the ones that took me by surprise, especially the, since we didn't expect it. Um. Well, I'm pretty sure AJ. Like Horror Night Nightmares expected it, but obviously they only just marked it as an original because it is a very pleasant surprise and a pleasant surprise it was. So, yeah. Yeah. So, what are some things yeah. that you were you hoping to see in the house though? Um, I'm just expecting. I feel like there's gonna be some kind of homage to still to Bloody Mary in some shape or form. Like, we're either going to be see a shattered mirror, some supernatural stuff happening. So, it's, yeah, I think it's going to be... I, I like it when they put those Easter eggs, just kind of like in a Carnival Graveyard, I mm -hmm. think it was. Yeah, in, in no, other words, no, East... not Carnival, Carnival Junkyard, my bad. No, it was Carnival uh, Graveyard. Was it? Yeah. In, a, in other words, it was called Easter Egg the House, because that was all just Easter eggs, pretty much. Yeah, like, literally, it was such an Easter Egg house that I'm... Pretty sure this one's going to be very similar, but it's mostly to Bloody Mary since they can't really showcase yeah. her. And, of course, of the following of Boris. Yeah. Honestly, if, if they could do Bloody Mary, I think they still can because I thought she was public domain at this point, but I'm not sure. Um, but if they were able to use her, I would love to see, like, the final confrontation between, you know, Mary and, and Boris. Like, the end-all be-all. I'm like, you know, two people go in, one person leaves type stuff. Yeah. And and it it would really open up to to the to like that whole ending thing that they did with like Freddy versus Jason and that kind of stuff, where every night it might be a different winner. Oh, so like you can Which... have Mary, you know, take over and kill Boris and just like gain ultimate power, or you know Boris is able to to either lock her away or kill her ghost or something like that. Like that would be so yeah. cool. But we'll see what they actually do with the house. That yeah. would be super cool, though. But the next house that we are going to be talking about is Wicked Growth, Realm of the Pumpkin. So... That's, that's so Wicked Growth, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's like, you could say, no, somebody in the HHN community said, oh, damn, they just spilled everything. Yeah, I guess you could call it a Wicked Growth. I'm like, oh, stop. <laughs> Shut up. But, you know, low-key, love you. That was great. Um... But still, like, I am super excited because now, um, I don't know if you guys saw that shirt last year. With uh, the Pumpkin Lord. With, with the Pumpkin Lord. So I'm definitely uh, super excited about this. But this one also has bullet points yeah. as well. Yusuf, do you want to talk about that? Um, yeah, so before we do that, though, let me let me read the, the description that's on the website. It says, uh, there's no breaking free from the vines of the Pumpkin Lord here to entrap you in his ever-growing evil. Dun, dun, dun. And on top of to add to this, of course, you know how people are with the facades of HHN. We did get to see a glimpse of the entrance mm -hmm. of Wicked Grove, which is covered in pumpkins, Halloweeny. You know those fall vibes that we all love—the smell of pumpkin spice. No I'm kidding. Um, 
but yeah, it is gonna be super amazing. Especially, it seems like you're entering like a tunnel mm-hmm. of full, like full of like pumpkins, like of course with vines and all that stuff. So I'm super excited to see what's inside, and it's yeah. in a tent too, which is really interesting. Oh yeah, not only that, I'm getting like major sequel to Twisted Tradition vibes because oh, Twisted Tradition was like sure. all pumpkins like everywhere. So I'm like, give me the sequel, enter it into a house. Like you've already done it before. You did it with Trick or Treat. You did it with Killer Clowns. We can do it with Twisted Tradition. Well, remember they were IPs. This is an original. Hopefully, I know, but like I'm, I you know, successful. It, I'm just saying, like the fact that they took a scare zone, almost like a test run for a house, and were mm-hmm. able to do that, and they saw how popular, like how popular it was. Like, I'm really hoping that's what they do with this one. But if not, it's still a very interesting story. I like the idea of the pumpkin lore being like essentially like the ruler of Halloween be pretty cool but let me read my bullet points here <coughs> excuse me i don't know where this cough is coming from rona no kidding. No. no we're all vaccinated in this podcast yeah get vaccinated please kidding. just do it <laughs> yes get vaccinated no <laughs> not kidding but like straight not up trying get... to tell you what to do but please get vaccinated please. we're all trying to get spooky season all right let's go all right the closer to halloween the more people practice the traditions the greater the powers of the pumpkin lord grow so that makes me think that you know as like the 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 event goes on they might start changing some stuff around like maybe adding more to it as the event goes on so like by the time you get to like the actual halloween day event it's a whole insanity thing i mean it could happen. Yeah. It could happen. Uh, uh, I just feel like uh, now with the <laughs> craziness that we received the other day, mm. it is going to be very hard to work around that. But if we do get something like that, I think that would be super cool. Yeah. I think that's just a lot of modifying, especially for the or like Universal Creative Team. Mm-hmm. But if they can actually do that, especially if they're willing to do go through so many changes with HHN icons, I think it's doable. Yeah, it's possible, yeah. So I, I think it's, they won't do, like, drastic changes. You know, they'll do, like, little small things, and then they'll kind of put them all together for the Halloween day. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking they might do, because that way, you know, you minimize the amount of work that needs to get done, but as the event goes on, you can tell that it's getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but speaking about bigger, uh, as the pumpkins grow ever bigger, your fear grows ever greater, and your odds of escape grow smaller. So I'm going to get suffocated by pumpkins. <laughs> I have a phobia of pumpkins. No, I'm kidding. That's a um, pumpkin phobia. That's a little pumpkin phobia. Yeah, oh, but my the, God. The, the I said pumpkin egg pumpkin phobia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <Anyway>. God. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, it makes me think that it's, your, it's just going to be traditions like blown over. Like it's just... I don't know how that. Like it'd be cool I'm pretty if we, sure like, the story is going to be pretty interesting, though. Yeah, like it'd be really cool to to have these scenes where you like go into a jack o' lantern. Yeah, like, it, like it's a literally a giant pumpkin, and you go through like the mouth of the jack o' lantern would be really cool. Yeah, I definitely. I hope. I wonder if we're going to see some Easter eggs from Toasted Traditions. I'm sure we will, this because now. You remember, like, the girl that's inside the pumpkin, and then she's just, like, whoa, like, Covered in pumpkin seeds stuff. and guts and stuff, yeah. Yeah. That'd I think really that'd cool. be super cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, but then the next one we have here, uh, from the cemetery to the forest, there's no breaking free from the tenacious vines of the merciless pumpkin lord. So, I, I like that they're going to be going through different locations. We're not just going to get, here is uh, pumpkin lord town. Like, you're going to see his power expand and grow and reach into other things. Yeah. I yeah. think that's definitely going to be cool. It's like almost like the ruler of Halloween, mm-hmm. in a sense. Make him an icon, please. Yeah. And I'm also getting some nice, uh, like, uh, Evil Dead vibes with the, the vines and how, mm-hmm. you know, the vines were kind of the ones that started everything in, in Evil Dead. So mm-hmm. I, I like the idea of mixing those two things of, like, Halloween traditions with Evil Dead would be really cool. I agree. Yeah. Um, oh, you know, it'd be really cool if, what? like, the pumpkin lord. What he does is he literally turns you into pumpkins, and like, you get some of the creatures are going to be like people that are like halfway into turning like a pumpkin, so that are like half pumpkin and like half human and stuff like that. 
Yeah, I think that'd be super cool. That's gonna be that's gonna be a really freaking from Ooh, cemetery yeah. to the forest. There's no breaking free from the tenacious <laughs> spines of the merciless pumpkin lord. You know, if if I knew any better, may, was there ever a cemetery next to the church in Twisted Traditions? I do not remember, honestly. I mean, yeah, uh, unless you're going it, because I feel like if would they reference to that, then that's definitely gonna be a cool yeah. ass house. Unless, unless you know, they go for that. Um, I don't know. Churches used to do this back in the day, but like some churches had a cemetery in the like in their backyard type of thing. Virginia, what? Virginia still does that. Yeah, there you go. In Herndon, <laughs> they that I went to Virginia literally like three days. Not three days ago. Wow. Three years ago. <laughs> I can't speak today, guys. And I'm also uh, drinking a uh, coffee pumpkin ale. And, of course, it, to be honest, it tastes nasty. But I'm getting rid of it because tomorrow is going to be my spooky season. But, hi, this is the Fear and Beer podcast. No, I'm kidding. I love Nick and Shane. They're <laughs> fucking amazing. But either way, like, yes, in Virginia, they do have churches, like, next to cemeteries. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's awesome, like, I think that's super old style, and I always love that kind of yeah. aesthetic. So I feel like uh, Wicked Growth is going to be serving something. Yeah, I, sort, I think so maybe. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but then our next house is one that we we kind of knew that it might be coming because of that special that they did on Peacock. Um, but that's going to be Puppet Theater Captive Audience. Is this the eleventh house? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Jeez. I'm kidding. But anyway, Puppet Theater, Captive Audience, we all saw the leak or the trailer. Yeah, like, more like well, a special the, oh, a sneak thing, peek. yeah. Well, since we got that sneak peek from Peacock with the Puppet Theater, Captive Audience, there is a description that goes with it. A puppeteer in a ballet troupe trapped in a deserted theater for years are about to turn you into a human puppet. That's your cue to scream. Yeah. So, yeah, I am super excited because I feel like this is going to have either a lot of small people or they're just going to be a lot of, like, very flexible people, and mm -hmm. I'm really excited about that. So no, I, I know this is going to be in a tent. Um, What if this is in the tent? You know, you know which tent I'm talking about. The tent that... Gets me every fucking year. Oh yeah. Yes, you know, 100. like the the, the like. Hundred percent. Like, watch like, it. Watch it be in that fucking tent, because this is the house that I think is going to scare me the most because of the whole puppet thing. Mm-hmm. Because I find puppets inherently creepy. Like, I just do. How about dolls? What the fuck? I mean, dolls are the damned. You know. Yeah, I mean, dolls and I feel like dolls and puppets are the same, which is puppets, like. You'll be like, oh, dolls scare me, but puppets don't, but then puppets scare me. Oh, no, I don't like dolls either. Dolls kind of thing. Oh. I, don't, I don't like either. <laughs> hey, I'm Jackie. Want to play? Hi, <laughs> <Heidi>, hello. <laughs> okay, that was like eerily close to what it actually sounds like. <laughs> that was like way too good. <laughs> yeah, I practice a lot of my free oh time. My I'm fucking that's, weird. That's fucking awesome, though. But anyway... But from the bullet point, it says, All the blood will drain you from your face as you see the green room run red with blood. So I'm super excited Hell that yeah. you get to, you know, you're in a green room. And then all of a sudden, it'd be cool if they were in a green room. And then there, there's just like, before you go on stage, there's like been a, like either a huge massacre or you're like slowly turning into before your performance. Mm -hmm. Well, about performance as in the story wise of course we're not going to be performing shit but like yeah literally like we are literally turning into these puppets as we go along as to our final final show we're all being used kind of thing i think that's super awesome and i yeah. feel like this is going to be a lot of boo holes with the curtains and all I that think so too. So that's that's why i'm that's why i'm so worried that's why i'm so worried <laughs> Curtains, mirrors, you name it. A little creepy opera music, maybe. Jeez. Who knows? <laughs> but in the next bullet point, we have your horror grows as you come up upon a grotesque living marionette made from severe severed limbs. 
That is so, so fucking terrifying to me. Oh my god, I want to make a cosplay out of that. Sorry. Puppets made out of human limbs. Like, why? That's so extreme. <laughs> That's like, you know, puppets aren't scary enough. Let's make them out of human pieces. Like, sure, why not? Thanks, Universal. <laughs> Appreciate that. I love that. <laughs> it's it's my favorite. I, I love dolls. I love marionettes. I love all that kind of stuff. I also have done marionette cosplay in the past so this is not this is amazing to me i was like ah oh, i need inspiration hi how are you um but you know of course with all the severed limbs all the bloodiness that we all turned into human puppets as we we're all just being decapitated and put mm-hmm. into wait are we like in toy story where we're like since stop like, little no, toys that'd be weird so we just like cut and then just become the baby spider <laughs> that'd be really creepy honestly be, i'm pretty sure that I y'all mean, are like, not looking at me on youtube but I'm, my face is like a little crack addict like <laughs> <laughs> y'all got any of the spider baby in there yeah the, the spider baby which is actually <laughs> really nice he's just really creepy yeah <laughs> anyway but if you manage to escape their gory puppetry then you'll become a part of this skeletal audience rotting in place that is an unfortunate. So there's no happy ending. Nope. You either rot or you become a performer. I think I'd much rather become a performer and have my fresh limbs. Thank you. Yes, exactly. I'm like, you know what? Maybe being a puppet, it won't be too bad. I'd rather do that than just watch the puppet show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, this is, I think this house is going to be Since really... they're bored, you know, just <laughs> rotting away. Like, At yeah. least I can dance with like shit like attached to my hands, but you know. There ain't no strings on me. No, no <laughs> strings to hold me down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't watch Pinocchio enough, and it's weird. Yeah, I haven't seen that movie in a long shit. time. But yeah, that is, of course. If you guys want to know more, of course, at onto YouTube there is snippets of the sneak peek from mm-hmm. Peacock that they leaked. Uh, last year in December or November, September, like some sometime, some some sometime around there, and <laughs> you will be able to see all the lovely little details about it. And yeah, yeah. But... <laughs> I, I do remember that in the uh, special too. They they mentioned like giant puppet, like animatronics, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Like, oh god. <laughs> Like this might be this might be the house that ruins me. Like I might I might walk out of there kind of shaky, uh, fetal position type stuff. So we'll yeah, see. As that, long as that it's might not happen. Nightingale. Nightingale's always fucks me <laughs> up. Nightingales and Scarecrow fucked me up. Scarecrow like destroyed me. Uncomfortably close. Those fuckers were uncomfortably close, but I loved it. For sure. But now uh, we're moving into our fifth and final house yep and it's the unpopular opinion hi how are you (laughs) it's not unpopular Uh, it's just that i don't understand the love for it yet maybe i will later but i still don't understand like i just can't I, i just don't love it as much as people say they do i i'm one of them hi how are you as much (laughs) I love brides way more. Of course, I love brides way more. But there is a undying little love in the back of my head, in the back of my heart, in the back of every little cavity that I have in my teeth. Nice, nice. Very good. And that is Revenge of the Tooth Fairy. Ah. Uh, we get to see James Westhorn come back. Fucking, uh, you know, my little favorite crotch goblin. Fucking so. crotch goblin. <laughs> Jimmy Jimmy so, the bitch. Yes. <laughs> so now, if you guys have not experienced it during H H N Light, you know how the story goes. But if you haven't, uh, stick around. Uh, you know, the people, the fairy, the fairy folk uh, aren't, for, aren't forgiving. Nope. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but, you know... You could not care and not believe in fairies. So, here, here is uh, the little description behind that. And it is, the innocent traditions of the tooth fairy hide behind a darker ritual. And it's an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. 
And of Oof. course, it sounds exactly like that. I feel like they were a little bit too harsh on the little child, but at the same time, he is what too. Three. Listen, he was he was an annoying little crotch goblin. Yeah. So, so... I, I I say he deserves what he gets. Uh, that's just me. Hey, yo, to turn into a little cute little <laughs> ugly little gremlin fairy, I'll I'll take it. The fuck. <laughs> but either way, now that we have discussed. The Tooth Fairy, if you guys have not heard me ramble about Tooth Fairy, I have videos on, on it on my YouTube. There's <laughs> endless podcasts of me talking about it, like everything that I do love about this house. But let me not put you through that torture and let you see for yourself. But step into an old manor house that has been swarmed by yellow clawed fiends dripping in blood, teeth, and gore. And of course, these are our favorite fairy friends. I want so. more blood. Just give me more blood. It was gory. I want within more. itself. I want oh. more. <laughs> I want more blood. Give me more. Anyway, he said, sorry. He says that, but then like is screaming bloody fucking murder when there's listen, so much of it. Listen. It runs out. No, I want, I want more blood. That's all I'm gonna say. Yo, if you're a fairy this year, get him. <laughs> yeah, do it. Anyway. But, on top of that, you grit your teeth as you see the evil fairies extract their tooth bounty by force by, while their victims struggle in vain. So, this is yeah. I think this is the aspect that I'm most excited about because I want to see more of the the overall taking of the teeth stuff. Especially yeah. because I, you could tell that there was going to be stuff that got taken out because of the the whole pandemic, with yeah. like the the fairies using like uh, dentist surgical tools and forcibly ripping yeah. out people's teeth. And I'm like, I'm ready for that. I want to see some of that. Yeah, especially when there's like the <laughs> the scene where you hear the dent like the dental thing, like, like the drill. Yeah, I was like, where are you coming from? What the fuck? Yeah. Like, why is there go? Where's that going on? You know, like yeah, I'm so excited to see that. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that one of the fairies is supposed to be in the bed with that couple, too. Mm -hmm. so. so hopefully there is a lot more stuff that happens and yeah. whatnot. But you hold in your screams or risk exposing your own teeth to their monstrous grasping claws. So, you know, these, I mean, not claws, but, you know, they, they, they are, tend to be very fast with their procedure by either killing you or turning you into a fairy, whichever one you want to just give them your tooth. Because these you, things these things don't give a fuck. They'll, they'll fuck you nope. up for teeth. No, absolutely not. They are not forgiving. <coughs> so, yes. As the... I think it was the nanny? It was a nanny, right? Uh, Yeah, I think so. Like, a nanny is the one that warned that bitch james just like erin would say you know <laughs> the crotch goblin i don't care i don't believe you i don't believe in fairies da, 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 da. famous last words yeah then everything went to shit yeah because <laughs> of him yeah so those were all of our originals guys that's yes. amazing oh wait man, where's the sixth one be... stop no, uh, wait. No, technically, because no, we already we had. Brian we is had, an original. No, that was one of the IPs. Cause remember, we had icons captured, and then the five that got announced. That's where we got our six originals. Mm, that's true. I was about yeah. to say, I'm like, mm, would you consider icons? So, yeah, I'm. I don't, yeah. Like I said earlier, I'm. I just cannot decide like which one I'm the most excited for, because uh, mm -hmm. they all sound so incredible. Yeah, and just like. I just don't know. It's gonna be so hard to like decide this year. I think, like, what my favorite house is gonna be. We'll see when we experience the event for yes. sure. Yes, heck yeah! But now uh, that we have discussed the houses, we are moving on to our scare zones. Now, granted, yeah. we have seen these again for like the past couple weeks. It's like what they may or may not be, um, but today we finally got the confirmation, like the official release names uh, and like what we get to experience in these scare zones and there are two that are, are 
very very exciting to me um funny enough they're going to be the last two that we discuss so we'll get those we'll get to those later um Mm -hmm. but the first one that we have is going to be in the san francisco area and it's actually going to be our only ip zone uh, and that's crypt tv yeah which is based on like the youtube short horror stories and stuff like that um granted i don't really know anything about crypt tv i just know like very very extremely basic stuff you um, know my own culture dad thought it had to do with tales from the crypt i'm sorry <laughs> which my would be honestly that would really be really thought. cool too it sounds it sounds like it though it tells from yeah. the crypt because of the crypt tv i was like okay it tells from the crypt but you know um i don't know anything about the youtube uh yeah shorts and all that stuff i might take a look at it before i heard they're a little cringy but um, I, I, did, I did take a look at of those scare zones and those scare zones are looking fucking yeah. fascinating funny enough actually uh crypt tv themselves they release like a playlist that you can watch mm-hmm. that's going to feature the stuff that you're going to see in the scare zone so that way you kind of get an idea of what you're going to be seeing so they made a, a playlist like specifically for horror night so you can get caught up on like the stuff that you're going to see which I think is pretty cool. So that way you don't have to dig through however many episodes or however many stories they've done. Yeah. So I think it's, it's, that's very nice of them. Yeah, I think so too. Um, like I said, I don't know anything too much. I just know that there is a scare zone with a spider with red the writing. Yeah. Some weird uh, thelemite. Uh, if you're a thelemite, of course I'm not insulting you. There is a th- thelemite um, symbol on the wall. And there's a bathtub. That kind of thing. It was really weird. I thought this was going to be some kind of like HHN, uh, like a set thing kind of for icons, but I guess, uh, but we did get the confirmation with the symbol of Crypt TV. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. So that's one of the things that is going to be in the scare zones. But of course, the other scare zone that we are going to be talking about is the one that's, uh, we, we knew about the art for a while. Yep. Especially through the tribute store and the merchandise, and it is thirty years, thirty fears, which is the very same or very similar design as the T-shirts that came out last year. Correct. Yes, and this looks to be because it's going to be in that front area, so like right when you walk into the park uh, between Shrek and Minions, it's going to be the the first big thing that you see uh, yeah. with that huge like red blazing Horror Nights logo smack dab in the middle of that. Yeah, that's going to be super cool, especially Hell at night. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> and we're definitely going to, I'm sure this is where we're, where we're going to see the icons outside of the, the house. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure we're going to see the other major characters that have shown up in scare zones and that kind of stuff. So I'm imagining like uh, the the body collectors, uh, vamps, um, yeah. escapees from Shady Side. So yeah, I, I'm expecting. Yeah a lot of really fun actor like scare actor interactions especially because in the pictures that i saw on twitter it looks like each icon might have like a little stage yeah and i'm ex- i'm expecting a lot of interaction back and forth with them where like they might insult you and stuff like that um, especially jack yeah i think so too uh, i hope that you know all of them are there all at once or mm-hmm. whenever they can so them just being coming up and down from those stages must be super exhausting as well. Oh yeah, like you got to give it up to our to to the performers because they're gonna be working extremely hard. Oh, absolutely. But on top of that, but there is the new uh, billboard in the HHN icons or Thirty Years Thirty Fears. There was the addition of Lady Luck and Chance. Yep. And Eddie, in a sense. And Eddie, in sense, yes. In a sense. Uh, we kind of knew Eddie was going to be on there, but not as prominent as he was. I was a little surprised that in this billboard, I could be wrong. I do have a picture of it, but I think Storyteller was involved in that billboard, but it wasn't involved with the other originals, which I thought was super interesting. I was like, hmm. that's really weird. Why is she over there rather than the originals? Yeah. Because she was one of the, what, the third original, technically? Uh, fourth. In a fourth, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of weird, especially with... Um... And then, like, director came out right after. Mm-hmm. Well, no, it was, it was caretaker, then director, then storyteller. 
So they're doing four and four. Wait. Storyteller, Eddie, Chance, and Lady Luck. So four and four. Oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But then Eddie's over there, though. Eddie is, like, right over there with them. It's just super weird. I was like, oh, okay, well. Yeah. Well, we'll see what Either way. But either or. Uh, It's going to be amazing, and I'm kind of glad to see these icon in their glory, and I hope that we get to see all sorts of sides with of them especially lady luck when she yes. turns into a monster especially because i've I've never had a chance to see lady luck in the flesh because that was one of the years that i missed so i'm excited to see to actually hey. see lady duck for the first time and chance and chance uh, and chance i really do hope that they bring the original 26 outfit because just because <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh but then our next scare zone is um this is the one that we had a, like kind of had a lot of speculation about, because just based on the name that was on the spec map, Seek and Destroy, we really had no idea what was going to be happening in this scare zone. Mm-hmm. So now we finally got our official um, description of that, and it is: a ruthless alien cyber regime led by the Controller has taken over New York, turning humans into fuel. Succumb or be destroyed. So I'm this getting. This reminds me very apocalyptical like sci-fi apocalyptical because mm, i'm, uh, I'm expecting yeah it sounds very dystopian you know with especially with the signs that were on the pictures you know uh the the controller is always watching and like that kind of stuff yeah it's very big brother very 1984 and then also the whole thing about turning humans into fuel is very much um soil and green and even um in a horror night sense sauce and steam yeah. Where they would literally turn, like, people's body moisture and body, like, you know, the water inside their body into into steam and into fuel. Yeah. So I'm getting I some guess this is, like, cool another vibes. continuation, another department of that sense. Yeah. So that's going to be yeah. pretty cool. But, you know, this is going to be really cool. There's a lot of really cool stages, a lot of, like, trucks. Uh, there's numbers on each one of those stages, mm-hmm. so I don't know what those mean, but it's definitely really, I think it's really interesting. I'm just wondering what those numbers represent. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of barrels, um, you know, which seems like a lot of those barrels could be almost like an homage to, uh, like, saw and steam, because then there's, like, steam or maybe some, some, like, well, of course, well, I could be wrong, because, you know, the body liquid... Mm-hmm. is is turns into steam once you put it in heat but then you know fuel because i guess <laughs> with the barrels people are turning into fuel that's that's so weird <laughs> but you know yeah uh yeah how are you're fucking weird but i love you <laughs> <laughs> it's great it's great i love yeah, that I'm, I'm not really sure what to expect with this so honestly like i can't think of what they might do in terms of the characters yeah but at the same time, it's very exciting because I, I have no idea what to expect, so I'll be very surprised to see what they do. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, uh, but, yes, what is our next one, Vania? Uh, I'm going to assume this one's going to be... I'm thinking Central Park. Central Park, yeah. But my worry about this is such a very signature... It's a, It's a signature thing that we've been wanting for years and it central park is already so small well i i think it, i have an idea it, as to how it, they the might fact, do it, but like the only way that i could think about it is the way that um they did academy of villains when they first had that mm-hmm. stage show or, near mel yeah. Dian- Dian. or kind of what but, they did with that space in twisted traditions where they had the church like they could turn that area to a stage as well yeah that's gonna be a big ass stage hell yeah but anyway um we we're, we're teasing that too much what are we planning to see on that stage uh gorewood forest yes oh god i'm so excited yeah they have no idea what we're talking about anyway well if you Listen, are a fan, we, we fan. hi, how are you? Anyway, so it is after 16 years, after the gory sacrifices of the Terra Quintus, the heartless Terra Queen is back and the evil is in her nature. God, so, so we finally excited. get to step into the story of uh, 
what is told by the storyteller and we get actually get to experience it again uh 16 years later so that's gonna be super I, exciting i am so excited to finally see the terror queen and the characters of Tor- terror Corentis. um yeah because i i loved her whole design when looking through the old pictures and the old artwork and stuff i just cannot wait to see what they do with this me too. Um, oh, I'm pretty sure they are going to bring back the old stage if they still have it because yes. I'm pretty sure after every now we have a kind of a confirmation in a sense that every 16 years she might be coming back. Correct. I I just I'm just excited to to see the Terra Queen with my own two eyes and just bow, be like, "What's up, a queen?" He's gonna lick her boot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Pumpkin phobia. Anyway, um. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, it's the Terra Queen is gonna be back. You mean storyteller? Yes. Kidding. That's my theory. Um, but either way, this is gonna be amazing. I always wanted to go during the uh, 16th anniversary uh, for the Sweet 16, and I wasn't able to go because I was too young. <laughs> but I'm super excited to actually uh, experience this for myself. Yeah. Um, no, it was 15. 15. My bad. Mm. Yeah, it was 15. Because it, it was 2015. Then she came back with everybody mm-hmm. else. Was it? No. No, she never came back. No, it was because it's Jack. Vanya. Vanya. What is 2021 minus 16? I can't count. <laughs> 14? <laughs> no. But... Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my oh, god. Please delete this. I feel so dumb. That's okay. Okay. How about this? What's 11 minus 6? It's 5. It's 2005. Oh my god. He's going to put this in the episode. I'm going to cry. Yes, 20 guys, what is 2021 minus 16? And this girl says 14. 15. Not even close. 16. Your mom. <laughs> oh my god five five <laughs> like, oh my god. i'm a production major not a fucking mathematician you dumb bitch listen this neither am i but... calculator this isn't neither am i but that's just basic math nah i stopped doing math a long time ago i don't do customer service anymore the fuck <laughs> oh my god <laughs> uh, that's okay. good. <laughs> all right, all right, let's move on. Let's move on. I guess I just want to talk about this next here. So, and this is the one I'm really, really excited for, and that is lights, camera, You're really action. Gonna put this in here. You yeah, oh, yeah, this is going in on. there. No, yes, it is. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Please but use no. a no, 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 it's gonna be hilarious. This is staying in. <laughs> So, the I next... hate everything. <laughs> the next guys, if you're so... listening to this, I don't exist. She does, and this is I all don't on exist. Her. Okay, let's move on now for reals, because I, 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 I'm, I'll be nice and I'll stop making fun of you. But our, our next <laughs> straight fuck you. <laughs> okay, okay, let's get to this thing already. <laughs> Because oh, the last the last care zone that we're discussing is lights, cameras, action, Eddie's revenge. Leather Daddy. Le- Chainsaw Leather Daddy is getting his own fucking scare zone, and I'm yeah. I'm there. I will the be fact there. that they're, he's finally getting the recognition he deserves is Hell amazing. Yes. And of course, what has been leaked today well not leaked they're already putting up stuff for the event is that uh one of the our little friends from haunt scene saw the band 55 stage on there so that is going to be a part of the eddie scare zone and i'm super excited yes especially i loved band 55 i loved 85 too i think i like 85 a little bit more but that's also not a popular opinion so hmm. but anyway yeah. reading the description for for um this one Get ready for the feel-bad movie of the year. Eddie Schmidt, Jack the Clown's brother, is filming a horror film, and the monsters are real. Confused. What do you mean? 
because Eddie Smith was a like fanatic of horror films, but I feel like mm-hmm. this is more of the director's alley. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, this, it, it might be between the two of them. So, like, Maybe. Eddie Eddie is, like, in charge of, like, the props and the special effects and stuff. Yeah. I think that's just interesting, but it's, like, a little weird. Mm. It's like, oh, like, why would he be making... I feel like that's more of a director's, like, feel of view, but mm-hmm. I could be wrong. But I'm still excited well, we'll for him, especially seeing him in the flesh. I've never... I never really got to see him. I guess I didn't care too much back then when I first started, but... This yeah. year, all in. I, I'm loving the fact that we get to see some icons for the first time. Oh, yeah. Like, like Eddie and the Icon sort of thing. heavy. I'm so excited to see those two in the flesh. Because, I mean, I've already seen Jack. I've already seen the director and, and all that stuff. Uh, and some of the anniversary years. But getting to see these two characters for the first time, I, I'm excited for that. I can't wait to see them. Yeah, for sure. I'm super excited. Uh, but yeah, that's really all the scare zones. Um, very varied, uh, like in terms of the theming. I think, like outside of the whole like anniversary scare zone, you have some really interesting stuff. Because so you have some like sci-fi, apocalyptic, dystopian stuff. Then you have Crypt TV, which is just like basic short horror stories. Uh, then you have you know the Terror Queen, which is all fantasy, like dark fantasy and that kind of stuff. <laughs> and then you have uh eddie which is kind of like your 80s slasher horror so like there's something for everybody i think yeah so yeah that's gonna be really fun uh, but moving on we also got the announcements for two shows this year we're getting two shows again i wonder how we're gonna manage the time between all of this so i don't, I don't know I don't yeah know. i really don't i just know i just want to see everything Good thing we we have freaking fear passes. Heck yeah, we do. But yeah. what's our first show, Vanya? Talk about a uh, marathon of mayhem, uh, Carnage Factory. We all are a horror for marathon of mayhem when it first came yes. out. Yes, and now there is a uh, Carnage Factory. So now we have the that there is no malfunctioning. Uh, the Screams, as terrifying show, comes to life in Universal Studios Lagoon, and it's a fear factory. So I'm going to assume it's anything honoring from the old icons like commercials to all the iconic uh, scenes from Horror Nights past, all yep. for the past 30 years. Yeah, I'm so glad to see that Marathon of Mayhem is back. Uh, I, I know it's a very, very popular show, um, and I like that it's going to be a different show every year, so I'm I'm excited to see this new version of Marathon of Mayhem, and I'm just glad it's coming back. Yeah. A little bit less 80s, but I'm pretty sure a little bit more cinematic in the mm-hmm. sense of uh, honoring the Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, you know. Yeah, I'm thinking it's going to go... happened in the past. I'm thinking it's going to go, like, super industrial because of the word factory. Oh, yeah. So, like, indus- industrial like, yeah, shit. like, industrial <gasps> rock and that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be really cool. Uh, but then we have our next show... Um, which is going to take place in the Fear Factor studio. Now, this one, um, I love. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Bye-bye, Academy of Villains. Bye. Yeah. We love yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Well, we know we don't love you. Stop. Anyway. Well, well you, you know, know what I mean. We, we love we okay. love the performers. Much respect to performers. Yes. The other two pieces of shit, we don't mention their name. Yes. Anyway. Much love and respect for everybody else in, in the dance mm-hmm. team. But either way, this is taking place now in the uh, Fear Factor, Fear Factor, just like you have said. Uh, but tell us a little bit more about it. Uh, yes, yeah, so it is going to be called Halloween Nightmare Fuel. Um, I absolutely love the fact that almost immediately somebody on Twitter already made that into a meme. Where they replaced Halloween and put in the Mountain Dew logo, so it's like a new version of Mountain Dew is Mountain Dew Nightmare Fuel. Gosh, it's stop. like the it's like the pumpkin spice of Mountain Dew. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> and I love that. Gonna, I love that too, though. Um, it's gonna be amazing. Yeah, but then to read the description on this, uh, a new show is igniting Halloween Horror Nights, featuring fire, pyro, and aerial performers. Yeah, so... and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be. Um... 
I don't know so much about the, the dancing aspect, but I'm pretty sure something that's going to be super raw. Uh, I feel like a little bit going hand in hand with Seek and Destroy a little bit. Mm. Maybe. Um, but I think this is going to be super... I mean, especially if you're trying to wait for the lines to die down at the house. Hey, I'll take it. Yeah. I'm interested to see what the show is because outside of, you know, what kind of performances we're going to see, we don't know if it's going to have like any type of story or if it's going to, you know, like how how they're going to do the stunts and that kind of stuff. So I'm excited to see what they do. Yeah, I am. I cannot wait. I mean, I cannot tell, especially all I know is fire and air, aerial performers and I'm good. And I'm over here like fire. Fire bad. <laughs> Yeah. But I do have one more uh, thing that I want to ask you, Yusuf. Okay, what's that? So, in the trailer, mm-hmm. they did say that each and every one of those icons are going to be responsible for a house or a scare zone. What do you think? What belongs where? So, I'm thinking... Um... Uh, based on like the theming of the house, that is going to be related to some of the icons. So I, I think it's obvious at this point. Um, oh God, I can't think of the name now. Uh, Tooth Fairy is it's going to be super related to the storyteller because of the whole fairy tale aspect of it. Um, I think Puppet Theater is going to have to do with the caretaker because of that little. You, no, wait, listen, listen. Because of the little Easter egg in the facade and the pictures of the facade where you see the name Albert Kane. Like, right next to the entrance of the theater. True. Especially because of how, gro- I think of how grotesque they're going to go with, like, severed limbs and, and, like, just, like, in-your-face gore and body horror, which is yeah. kind of what the caretaker is known for. True. Uh, and then... I'm trying to think of who else I can really Legendary to Truth houses. has to be hard, Bloody Mary, but they just can't mm. show her. It's, it's and then like scary still has to do with Jack. Yeah, definitely. Because it's it's like it's a thing that's like led by horror, and of course everything is attracted to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the wicked growth. I, I think the pumpkin like, is a little we- is a little weird to pinpoint. Yeah, I think wicked growth is just gonna focus more on like the pumpkin lord and not really throw in much to do with the other icons. Yeah. Hmm. And and then like scare zone wise, I'm thinking Crypt TV might belong to the director. No, I take it back. I fucking take it back. What? I feel like scary is Lady Luck because everything unfortunate happens to them. Okay. Everything. So okay. yeah. Interesting. So so it's basically like you can't win in the gamble with with her. Mm. So if you were to because in her year, every house had to do with unlucky coincidence yeah. that has happened to the people like that. Where they, not that where they didn't deserve where they took it, a gamble, but like where they took a gamble and then paid the price. Yeah, for it. yeah. Because you live in scary, it's known for that, and of course, like an evil takes like part in a in a town that you know everything just unfortunate happens, and they didn't ask for it. Like you literally take like a gamble more, by living there. Yeah, for sure. And then Wicked Growth, I'll, I'll tell, I feel like maybe it's a representation of Jack. Maybe. Possibly. And then Revenge of the Tooth Fairy, of course, Storyteller. Crypt TV, I feel like it's, I mean, it's an IP, but I feel a little bit more der- derived towards the Third director. director. Seek, and Dest- well, Seek and Destroy, I can't really. I would say, say. it's like something like The Usher, because it's very like B-movie type stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Like, uh, you know, it's the whole concept of, like, dystopian yeah. science fiction of, like, turning humans into fuel, that kind of stuff. It sounds very, like, 50s, 60s, even 70s, like, B-movie. Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking it might have something to do with, like, The Usher, because it would be one of those, like, almost like a slaughter cinema type movie that you would see in a drive-in. Yeah. But, you know, for me, I thought, like, Puppet Theater was going to be more chance because she did come from, like, of course, if you guys knew any of the backstory for Chance, is that she was uh, captivated. She she was like a ballerina, like a toy ballerina, and then like she like not came to life, but it's like you know Jack took a liking to her, and then she came to life, and then 
crazy, crazy bitch syndrome. That kind of thing. <laughs> crazy bitch so, syndrome. But because, you know, and of course, there's a lot with the HHN 26 where there's a lot of theater things happening mm. in the asylum. So it's kind of very hard because you like the fact that you pointed out that there's an Easter egg with Albert Kane is like, damn, then the, where does chance have a like a part in that, especially uh, since there is like a like each icon is representing a, like a house like and maybe that's like an Easter egg that we all have to discover once we go through if we find mm-hmm. it, you know. But Puppet Theater, you already pointed it out that that's already like a little given for you guys. <laughs> he spoiled it. <laughs> So it spoiled yeah. it. Spoiled it. Spoiled it. Spoiled it. <laughs> um, like, but yeah, that's pretty much everything. The, the, the literally the info dump that we got from Horror Nights. And you got a whole bunch of info dump from us during our reaction. Heck yeah. And including not me counting because he decides <laughs> to be a dick and leave this into the <laughs> podcast. Ah. <laughs> uh. I love being the editor of this podcast sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, Anyways. it is time for some housekeeping. So, Vanya, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and on YouTube under HHN Cultus. Uh, if you guys are listening to this on Friday the 13th, I will be releasing a video today if you have not seen it. It is me doing basically what I did with my Eddie makeup. I am doing a Jack-inspired makeup for the uh, Camp Crystal Lake party, uh, the after party for Megacon. So if you guys have not seen it, go ahead and to my YouTube, check it out. And, you know, just another celebration of Friday the 13th. But there's also other talented people in this podcast. So my co-host that still doesn't want to edit out my awful counting but <laughs> where can we find you all right talented person that i love so much but not really hi <laughs> <laughs> so uh for my personal stuff you can find me on instagram at yousef1220 and on twitter at it be uh and then for our podcast uh for our socials you can find us on facebook instagram and twitter at sounds from the grave And then for our podcast, you can listen to us on Anchor, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, and pretty much anywhere else you can get your podcasts. And then we also have our email, which is soundsfromthegravepodcast at gmail.com. So if you you ever want to reach out to us and and have any questions or want to discuss anything with us, uh, just don't don't be afraid to reach out to us on any of uh, our social media platforms. Um, But yeah, that's really all we have really hope that if you're listening to this on the day it comes out that you have a very very good friday the 13th um yes. and that you say stay spooky. away from water stay away from water and yeah. also um if you haven't done so please 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 get vaccinated don't ruin haunt season for the rest of us uh, i but, know that's right yeah but outside of that i hope you guys have a good night or good day and that you stay spooky stay spooky guys good night Bye.